Now we'll continue with the functional areas of the cerebral cortex. First beginning with the frontal lobe. Area number 4 that is the motor area. It is located in the precentral gyrus and the paracentral lobule. It controls the voluntary activities of the opposite half of the body. Area number 6 that is the premotor area. It is located in the posterior parts of the superior middle and the inferior frontal gyri. It controls the extrapyramidal system. Area number 6 and 8 that is the frontal eye field. It is located in the posterior part of the middle frontal gyrus. It controls the horizontal conjugate movements of the eyes. Area number 44 and 45 that is the motor speech area also called as the Broca's area. It is located in pars triangularis and pars opercularis. It controls the spoken speech. Prefrontal area that is it is located in the remaining large anterior part of the frontal lobe. It controls the emotion, concentration, attention and judgment. Now going to the parietal lobe. Area number 3, 1 and 2 that is the sensory area, somesthetic area. It is located in the postcentral gyrus and the paracentral lobule. Its function is, it helps in the perception of extraceptive and proprioceptive impulses that is the touch, pain and temperature. Area number 39 that is the parietal area. It is located in the supramarginal and angular gyri. It helps in stereognosis and sensory speech. Now the occipital lobe, that is the area number 17, it is the visual sensory area or the striate area. It is located in and around the post calcarine sulcus. It helps in vision. Area number 18 and 19, that is the visual psychic area that is the parastriate and the peristriate areas. It surrounds the striate area. It helps in correlation of visual impulses with the past memory and recognition of objects seen and also helps to see the depth. Now the temporal lobe, area number 41 and 42. That is the auditory area. It is located in the medial, middle of the superior surface of the superior temporal gyrus extending as to its lateral surface. Helps in hearing. Now the paracentral lobule, the motor part controls the sphincters of anus and urinary bladder that is the center for defecation and micturation. The functional areas that is the area 3, 2, 1 and 6, 17, 18 and 19 also extend on the medial surface. So these are some of the functional areas of the cerebral hemisphere. Now we will see the types of sulci. The limiting sulcus, it separates at its floor two areas which are different functionally and structurally. An example is the central sulcus which lies between the motor and sensory area. So such type of sulcus is called as the limiting sulcus. Axial sulcus. This type of sulcus develops in the long axis of the rapidly growing homogeneous area. 
example for this is the post calcarine sulcus in the long axis of the striate area operculated sulcus separates by its two lips two areas and contains a third area in the walls of the sulcus example for this is the lunate sulcus secondary sulcus is produced by factors other than the exuberant growth in the adjoining areas of the cortex example for such is the lateral and parieto occipital sulci complete sulcus is a very deep so has to cause elevation in the walls of the lateral ventricle examples are the collateral and the calcarine sulci so these are the types of the sulci just to summarize limiting sulcus axial sulcus operculated sulcus secondary sulcus and the complete sulcus now in brief we will discuss the blood supply of the cerebral hemisphere now when you see the superolateral surface of the cerebral hemisphere the superior medial border the small strip is supplied by the anterior cerebral artery whereas the major part the middle part of the superolateral surface is supplied by the middle cerebral artery whereas the lower part of the temporal and the occipital lobes is supplied by the posterior cerebral artery so the major artery here is the middle cerebral artery now on the medial surface the major part of the medial surface is supplied by the anterior cerebral artery a lower part of the temporal lobe is supplied by the middle cerebral artery whereas the half of the temporal and the occipital lobes are supplied by the posterior cerebral artery on the inferior surface the occipital lobes and the part of the temporal lobes is supplied by the posterior cerebral artery whereas the orbital surfaces is supplied by the middle cerebral artery and the medial part on either side of the orbital surface a small strip area is supplied by the anterior cerebral artery so the major blood supply of the inferior surface is by the posterior cerebral artery so this is the blood supply of the brain in brief which includes all the surfaces of the cerebral hemisphere